Good morning, boys and girls. Welcome to Children Worship. Right now, we are going to start off this time with a couple of songs. The first song that we're going to sing is a song called The Gift to You. And so this song has hand motions. So it starts off with everything I am, everything I am, everything I'll be, everything I'll be, I'll give it to you, Lord, I'll give it to you, Lord, and do it thankfully. So like a thank you sign. Every song I sing, every praise I bring, everything I do is a gift to you. And as the second verse is, everything I have, everything I have, all you've given me, all you've given me, I'll give it to you, Lord, I'll give it to you, Lord, and do it thankfully. So the same thing, thankfully. Every song I sing, every praise I bring, Everything I do is a gift to you. So let's sing the song together. is love and this song we're going to clap we're gonna start really slow a medium pace and then really fast so let's see if you can keep up let's sing the song together
saying is, your love is amazing. And the hand motions goes like this. Your love is amazing, steady and unchanging. Your love is a mountain firm beneath my feet. Your love is a mystery, how you gently lift me. When I am surrounded, your love carries me. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Your love makes me sing. For the second verse, it's like this. Your love is surprising. I can feel it rising. All the joy that's growing deep inside of me. Every time I see you, all your goodness shines through. I can feel this God song rising up in me. Let's sing the song together. to the portion of worship where we'll be praying. So right now, grab your pencil, pen, or marker, and your notebook. So we've been going through the ACTS uh, format of praying. Today I want you to try something a little bit different that makes you reflect about who you are and how you want to follow Jesus. So right now I want you to tilt it horizontally, sideways, and I want you to draw two trees, okay? I'm going to draw one tree, and then I'm just going to draw some leaves. In the tree, I'm going to draw maybe three or four fruits, so I'm just going to draw circles to represent it. And I'm gonna draw the ground and just some roots. I call this fruit to root. So I'm going to write fruit to root. So these fruits that I'm going to draw are going to represent some of the bad things I've just done this past week. So I'm just thinking something that I've done this past week was I was um, maybe too busy for God. I was too busy doing my own thing, um, too busy doing schoolwork, trying to teach, and I didn't have a lot of time spent with God. So I might want to draw that or write that out. Didn't spend time with God. Something else that I did or didn't do this week was that I got really angry. I just got really angry very easily. And not only that, I threw a temper tantrum. So I'm gonna write temper tantrum. Something else that happened this past week? Hmm. Well, I wasn't very patient. I got kind of irritated when 
someone was too slow or made a mistake and I was just like, Ugh, that's really frustrating. And so I wasn't very patient to other people. So I should write that. Not patient. I don't know what you are writing and what you are drawing on your fruit, but I want you to think about what are some of the fruits or some of the bad things that you've done this past week. And you can jot that down. And some of you might have, you know, written down one thing, two things, three things, maybe five things. And oftentimes when we think about sin, we just think, oh, just when we think about sin, it's just, you know, something that I do. Um, but if there is a bad fruit, like a bad apple or something like that, I'll just pick it up and throw it away. Easy. That's how I handle it. But when we think about a tree, if a tree bears bad fruit, it's important to see what is wrong with the roots. So we have to look down and see, hey, what is going on? And when we look at the roots here, we are often rooted in sin. We're taking in things from the world, what the world is telling us to do. So on the ground, I'm going to write world. So for us as a tree, we're just taking in a lot of these things that the world is telling us to do. Oh, it's okay. You have your right to be upset. You can throw a temper tantrum whenever you want. Or the world says, it's okay to cheat. You just, you know, cheat a little bit and you'll do better. I bet you that. Okay, so this is what happens when we are rooted in the world. However, what would it be like to be rooted in God. Let's draw another tree. We're also going to draw roots. But instead of being rooted in the world, we're going to be rooted in God. And now I'm going to ask you to draw fruits. That's, you know, that's shaped like hearts and for you to write inside of it. So right now, I want to give you some time to write inside these heart-shaped fruits. What are some qualities that you think you would want if you are rooted in God? And so you have one tree rooted in the world, maybe some of the sins you've done this past week. And here, rooted in God, what are some behaviors or traits that you would like? And so remember, when we look at our fruit, we want to examine the roots and see where are we rooted in. All right, so right now you can click pause and spend some time to jot it down. And when you are done, click play. So now that you're done jotting these ideas down, let me share a couple of the things that I wrote down on my tree. So on the left, here I'm rooted in the world. Sometimes I'm not very patient. I throw temper tantrums. But here, it's what it's like if I am rooted in God. What I think it should look like and how my life should reflect it is that I read the Bible, I am gracious, I am a loving sister or a loving daughter to my parents. So right now I would want you to share your tree. What are your trees looking like, whether it's being rooted in the world or being rooted in God? How do you want to change from one tree to the other? Okay. So the person who woke up first will share first. So you can click pause to share, and when you are ready, you can click play. Now that you're done sharing, let's look at our fruit to root picture. We were at once rooted in the world, and now we want to be rooted in God. So today in your prayer groups, I want you to pray with your partner and pray that, oh God, I am sorry, I need to confess some of these sins. This past week, I threw a temper tantrum, I was not very patient, I didn't spend a lot of time with you. Please change my heart so that I can become more gracious, I can read the Bible more, I can be a more loving sister, or loving daughter, or loving son, loving brother. So we're trying to focus on reflecting about who you are in your everyday life and what you want to be like as a follower of Christ. 
okay? So this time, the person who woke up the latest will pray first, and then afterwards, switch. So please click pause, and once you are done, you can click play. Now we're moving to the portion of worship where we're going to be learning more about the Bible. So, as we start, I'm going to ask you a question. Do you know what is a potluck? Or maybe, have you ever been to a potluck before? Maybe you have, maybe you haven't. A potluck is where people come together and they bring food. They bring food from home or maybe they order different things. And so, each person who is at the party will bring one thing and share it with everybody. And so, if you had a potluck at your school, what would you bring? I want you to think about that right now. Hmm. I see heads turning, ideas going. Okay, can you say out some of the things that you might bring to a potluck? Pizza, chips. Okay, all these things could be really great things. But I'm just wondering, are you going to bring maybe the best food? Or do you think you're going to bring some leftovers? What do you think? Well, um, for me personally, I would probably want to bring something new, something nice, maybe my favorite food. When I was a kid, I would always want to bring like maybe pizza from Costco or maybe some cupcakes, maybe jello with a lot of different layers. I don't know anyone who would go into the refrigerator, look at, oh, what kind of leftovers do I have? Oh, look at this half-eaten bag of chips. Let me bring that to the potluck. I mean, a crumbly cookie. Do you think you'd bring that to a potluck for everyone else to share? Now, so today we're going to be thinking about that concept of what are you going to bring forward? And what was the Israelites' reaction or their response when they are asked to bring something? And so we are going to continue our series on Exodus. And we're going to be talking about the tabernacle. And you may wonder, what is a tabernacle? Well, let me show you. A tabernacle is a temple that was built in the wilderness by the Israelites. And after they were freed from Egyptian slavery, they built that temple to dedicate it to God. And so this was basically God's house. And this was the place where God had the Ark of the Covenant. It was a place where people can uh, make sacrifices, um, a place they can worship um, when they were in the desert. So as you can see, there are tents all around. Uh, there is a place for the altar. And inside the temple, there's actually an ark um, a veil, lampstand, a holy place, and there's a lot of different things that makes a tabernacle a tabernacle. So some of you may wonder, so what's so important about the tabernacle? I mean, isn't this just a tent where people go and worship? It's not that important, right? Well, if you look at the book of Exodus, it's pretty interesting. There's about 15 chapters that talks about how God recruits Moses and talking about the plagues and the Red Sea. There's only another three chapters talking about the Israelites wandering in Mount Sinai. Then there's another six chapters talking about God giving the covenant. And the rest of the book, chapters 25 to 40, is about the holy tent, the tabernacle. So if the book of Exodus spends that much time talking about the tabernacle, it must be pretty important, right? So in the next three weeks, we'll be talking about the tabernacle and we'll have a different focus each time. At this point of the story, after the Israelites are in the desert, Moses is there and God is telling Moses, hey, for me to dwell among you, I would need a place to stay. And so here are very specific directions of what I would need for you guys to build it. And of course, Moses can't build the tabernacle just by himself. So he went out and told the Israelites, these are God's um, required uh, materials for the tabernacle. Please go get them. What do you think 
the Israelites said? Or how do you think they re responded? Do you think they would be like, oh, are you serious? Do we have to bring it? Oh, let me see what I have in my house. I think I have a leftover sock somewhere here, right? Or maybe some of them were like, ooh, uh, I think I have some things, but ooh, this, this silk, it's too nice. I wanted to make my own like bathrobe or something. I don't need to give it to the church. Let me make sure I find something I don't need and then, you know, I'll give it to them to build a tabernacle. What do you think was their reaction? Can you share among your family members and say what you think they might do? Well, let's see how they reacted and how they responded to God's command. You said you, we needed we need things to build the tabernacle. Yeah, um, I have a gold bracelet. Yes, just take it, just take it. Take all. I have more. I have more, and I'll I'll come go home and bring it back to you. Okay, I'll go. Moses, I came as soon as I heard the announcement. I brought these stones and many more where that came from. I have plenty. And so we are ready to build the tabernacle. I know it's a big project, so I'm just ready to go. I'm ready to give my best. Just let me know. Moses, well, I have the finest linen, as you can see. Very great silk, just like what God has commanded. I can give you this. I can go and go home and spin more. I am very good with my fingers and very good with my hands. I can definitely make more of this. Just wait, I'm gonna bring more and give it to you so I can use it for the tabernacle. I came as soon as I heard. I've been saving this, all this for a long time. I'm here to give it all to you and build the tabernacle here. So here you can see the Israelites were giving their best to God, not just the gold or the silver, but actually their skills as well. They were building God's house. What does that mean for us today? How do we build God's house? Well, oftentimes, instead of the idea of hammering in a bed or building a desk or buying him a flat screen TV, God wants us to build his church as in build the people within the church. When we say build the people, oftentimes it means to really use our talents, use our skills, and perhaps the things that you know best. And if you're having a hard time of thinking about what can I do to build God's church, let's look at a couple of kids and see what ideas they have. Well, my best talent is baking or cooking. So one way I can use to build up the church is, um, hmm, I know I can bake chocolate chip cookies and I can give it to those people who've been serving our church. They've been doing a good job during this time. Got some flour and some sugar. I mean, I guess my best talent is basketball, you know? So maybe it could help my younger sister since she doesn't really know. Maybe that's a good way to build up the church. Hmm. Well, my greatest talent is drawing. One way I can build up the church is... Um, I know I can make an encouragement card or a thank you note to people like Pastor Tim. He's always preaching for us. That's what I'll do. when the church opens for children worship. Or during this time, I can use my skills to help play for home when we have maybe uh, worship time at home. I think God would really like that. Hmm, what could I do? I don't play basketball. I don't know how to draw. I'm too young to cook. I don't play an instrument. How can I build up God's church? I want to do my best. What could I do? He still wants me to help. Actually, I know. I can pray for people. I can pray for people at our church, our teachers, 
um, our friends. There's so many people who need prayer. That's what I'll do. I'll try my best and do my best to pray. And I bet you that's going to work in terms of building the church. I can also tell my friends to watch a children worship video. I'm a little shy, but I think that's a great way to build up the church. Don't you think so? So you may be just like one of those kids. Maybe you have a similar talent or similar skill, and you also want to build the church. So I want you to spend a little bit of time us talking with your family. How can you give your best to God? What is your talent? What is something that you do best? And how can you use that to further God's kingdom? How can you build up people within the church, maybe encourage them or care for them? Especially during this time where people, adults and kids need encouragement. Okay, so right now you can pause the video and share. And once you are done, you can click play. So whatever you may have decided today, whether it is uh, making a card for your pastor, cooking dinner, maybe leading a mini worship session at home with your family with your musical talents, or even as simple as praying for people in the church or praying for your family, I'd like you to do that cheerfully because God loves a cheerful giver. He doesn't want you to be mumbling and grumbling and like, oh, I didn't really want to do it, but because I have to, then I'll do it. But, oh, so annoying. And God also doesn't want you to do it out of your own prideful self and your own prideful desires. Like, oh, I'll do it. Just because maybe if I do it, people will praise me and see how good I am. Oh, that's why I'll do it, right? No. God loves a cheerful giver. God loves a giver who is doing this out of love for him. So I would like to challenge you, go out and build God's church and give him your best. Use whatever talent you have, but whatever you do, give him your very best. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for this day. Thank you that we are able to come here, worship you, and be able to learn more about the tabernacle. We know that you are here with us, and I pray that we will be able to give you our very best and use our talents, our very best talents, to build up your church. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And that's all for today. I'll see you guys next week. Bye!